Hello, my name is Beth Clarkson. I have a PhD in statistics and I've been certified as quality engineer by the American Society for Quality for the past nearly 30 years, since 1987. And over the last few years, I have grown increasingly concerned about the accuracy of the machines that count our votes. So in 2016, I set up and ran exit polls in Southeast Kansas for the express purpose of checking and verifying the counts that are provided by our voting machines. I was able to set up five different sites here in Southeast Kansas. The way we did this, we set up a booth um, outside of these five polling locations. The surveys were set up such that uh, when somebody exited the polling location, they were contacted by a volunteer, asked first of all if they'd cast a vote. If they had cast a vote, they were asked if they would be willing to fill out one of our surveys. And if they responded that they would, we gave them a clipboard with a blank survey and a pen. They could fill it out anonymously, drop it into our survey collection box, and no one would ever know how they voted. The results are unfortunate in that they definitely show signs, all five sites show signs of votes counts having been manipulated. And what we're actually looking at are the differences in the percentages between the report, the official reported um, votes and our exit poll results. That is, for example, in um, southeast Wichita, we had approximately um, 45 percent of voters cast, uh, according to the official results, 45 percent of voters cast a vote for Hillary Clinton, but according to our exit poll results, it was more like 48 percent. So roughly a three percent difference, and that difference is that what we examine in our statistical analysis. Those differences are what we call errors. That is, they don't match up. Now, we don't expect a perfect match. We're never going to get that. There are always going to be some sort of errors due to random sampling errors, due to people making mistakes when they fill out their surveys or making mistakes when they filled out their, their ballot. So we don't expect a perfect match. What we're looking for are how big those errors are. Large errors are an indication of uh, manipulation and fraud. And we're also looking for um, randomly distributed errors. They should be both positive and negative. If all of the errors are favoring one candidate and penalizing or penalizing a different candidate, that is also a sign of fraud and vote manipulation in our, our counting process. Unfortunately, that is exactly what we see. For the presidential race, um, let me start out actually with talking about Gary Johnson and Jill Stein because the errors shown for those two candidates are randomly distributed. There's some positive, there's some negative, there's even a couple of large errors that maybe throw off a, a warning sign, but nothing, no serious problems observed in Gary Johnson and Jill Stein's results. But when we look at Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump, with the exception of the Sumner County site, which is different, all four of the other sites show clear indications that votes were siphoned from Hillary Clinton to Donald Trump. The error, the magnitude of the errors are large. They throw off our statistical flags as being improbable given our sample size and response rate. And in addition, there they're even. It's, it's like you can, you can look at the bars and say, oh, it looks like votes that were supposed to go to Hillary Clinton actually went to Donald Trump because Hillary Clinton's, Hillary Clinton's votes are down compared to our exit poll and Donald Cl Trump's votes are up compared to our exit poll and the percentages more or less match from site to site. This is evidence of election fraud with our machine counts being manipulated. Now this happened in Kansas and the overall magnitude, even though it's enough to set off our statistical warning signals, it's not enough to have altered the outcome here in Kansas. We're talking two to three percent at the sites that show this manipulation leading to a 
two to three percent at the sites that show the manipulation, down for Hillary and up for Donald Trump for a total of four to six percent difference in the final outcome. But Donald Trump won Kansas by over 15 percentage points. So it was not enough, even if it was all across Kansas, it wouldn't have changed the outcome. And it's not all across Kansas because it didn't happen in Sumner County. And the the machines that were used in all three of these Kansas counties, ES&S, Ivotronics, these are used all across the country. And certainly a 4 to 6 percent difference would have been enough to shift the outcome in several other states, including the ones that Jill Stein has requested recounts in. I am posting my, um, my raw data and my analysis results on my blog site, uh, www.showmethevotes.org. And you can go there. You can download all the, the down. You can download all the raw data, including the um, the results I did not include in my analysis. I'll have an explanation as to why. But people can look at it and see. It's not actually that different, but I'm not confident about it, so I'm not including it. My goal in setting up these exit polls was to check on the accuracy of the machines. If the machines were shown to be accurate and my previous analysis results were, were clearly due to some other cause, if that was the case, and it would have relieved my uh, concerns, the results did not show our machines to be accurate. The results showed our machines to be manipulated, and we need to do something about this because we don't have a democracy when we, our votes are not counted accurately. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I hope you share my concern and desire to improve our voting process and you can follow me on, please follow me on YouTube and uh, Facebook and at my website www.showmethevotes.org.